The first chill of autumn crept through my bedroom window, carrying with it the scent of decaying leaves, and something else, something I couldn't quite place. I shivered, pulling my blanket tighter around my shoulders as I peered out at the house next door, Old Man Craven's place. It loomed in the pre-dawn darkness, a hulking shadow against the lightening sky. I'm Carl Yoncetta and I've lived in Hollowbrook all my life, but this October felt different, wrong, somehow. A flicker of movement caught my eye. Was that Craven shuffling around his porch in the dim light? I squinted, trying to make out his hunched form. For a moment I could have sworn his skin gleamed orange in the weak moonlight. I blinked, and he was gone. Sleep eluded me after that. I tossed and turned until my alarm blared, signaling the start of another day at the hardware store. A news alert popped up on my phone as I sipped my morning coffee. Local woman missing, the headline screamed. Susan Talbot, age 32, hadn't shown up for work yesterday. My stomach churned. That made three disappearances this month. The walk to work took me past Craven's house. I'd made this trek a thousand times before, but today, my feet felt leaden. As I approached, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Something had changed. There, on Craven's porch, sat a jack-o'-lantern. Its carved face was so lifelike, it was unsettling. Eyes that seemed to follow me. A mouth twisted into an expression I couldn't quite read. I'd never seen anything like it. The craftsmanship was exquisite and every line and shadow was perfectly placed, but something about it made my skin crawl. Beautiful, isn't it? I nearly jumped out of my skin. Craven had materialized beside me, his watery eyes fixed on the pumpkin. How had I not heard him approach? I... yes, it's quite something. Did you carve it yourself, Mr. Craven? He turned those watery eyes on me, and I felt a chill run down my spine. Oh yes, I always work with the freshest materials. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. There was a faint, sickly sweet smell in the air, rotting vegetation and something else, something worse. You should come by on Halloween, Carl. I'm planning quite the display. Sure, I'll do that. I practically ran the rest of the way to work. Throughout the day, I couldn't shake the image of that pumpkin from my mind. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw its face, eerily lifelike, almost familiar. More than once, I caught myself absently tracing its features in the air, my fingers tingling with a phantom sensation of soft, yielding flesh. When I finally trudged home that evening, exhausted and on edge, I saw that Craven's porch now boasted two jack-o'-lanterns. The new addition was another masterpiece, its expression hauntingly emotive. It reminded me of someone for a fleeting moment, but I couldn't quite place who. I shook off the thought and hurried inside. That night, I dreamed of pumpkin patches stretching as far as the eye could see. As I walked between the rows, the gourds began to whisper. I leaned in close, straining to hear. Help us, please, Carl, help us. I woke up drenched in sweat. The sheets tangled around my legs like vines. The next few days passed in a blur of unease. More pumpkins appeared on Craven's porch, each a masterpiece of carving and unnervingly lifelike. And with every new jack-o'-lantern, another missing person report hit the local news. A nagging feeling tugged at the back of my mind, but I couldn't quite place it. Nobody else seemed particularly concerned. When I tried to voice my unease to Sheriff Davis, he just laughed it off. Come on, Carl. You're letting the Halloween spirit get to you. They're just pumpkins. Damn fine ones, too. Old Craven's got quite the talent. But something felt off. Every time I passed Craven's house, dread pooled in my stomach. The pumpkins seemed to watch me, their eyes following my every move. Sometimes, in the still of the night, I thought I could hear muffled sounds coming from next door, but I told myself it was just the wind. I ran into Craven at the grocery store a week before Halloween. He was buying an ungodly amount of candles. Planning a big event? He fixed me with that unsettling gaze. Oh yes, All Hallows Eve is a very special time, Carl. The veil between worlds is thin. It's the perfect night for transformations. I noticed something dark caked under his fingernails as he spoke. My mind recoiled from the implications. You will come, won't you? I've saved a special place for you in my display. I mumbled some non-committal response and fled, leaving my half-filled cart behind. As I power walked home, my phone buzzed with another alert. Tim Burkett, the high school quarterback, hadn't come home last night. That evening, a new jack-o'-lantern appeared on Craven's porch. Its features were youthful, with a hint of a cocky grin. Something about it niggled at my memory, but I couldn't quite place why it seemed so familiar. I slept with the lights on that night, 
but no locker lights could keep out the dreams. Fields of screaming pumpkins, the wet sound of a knife carving, and always Craven's eyes watching me from the darkness. As October wore on, a dark cloud settled over Hollowbrook. The usual excitement for Halloween felt muted, overshadowed by an undercurrent of fear. More people had gone missing, and whispers of maliciousness circulated through town. I couldn't shake the feeling that it all led back to Craven's house. One evening, unable to bear the sight of those ever-watching jack-o'-lanterns, I took a different route home. As I cut through the park, I spotted a familiar figure hunched on a bench. It was Mrs. Talbot, Susan's mother. Carl, have you seen my Susan? I shook my head, guilt gnawing at me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Talbot, I haven't. She clutched my arm, her eyes wild. I saw her, Carl, last night in my dreams. She was screaming, begging for help, but her face, it was all wrong, orange and twisted. A chill ran down my spine. I mumbled some platitudes and hurried away, her sobs echoing behind me. That night, my dreams were more vivid than ever. I found myself in Craven's basement, surrounded by pumpkins in various stages of carving. Their faces were contorted in agony, flesh and rind blurring together. In the center stood Craven, knife in hand, beckoning me closer. I woke up screaming, sheets drenched in sweat. The next day, I called in sick to work. My inner detective was at work. I spent hours poring over missing person reports. A horrifying realization dawned on me as I flipped through the photos. Does each disappearance coincide with a new jack-o'-lantern on Craven's porch? But it was impossible, right? A storm rolled in that evening, thunder shaking the windows. Between flashes of lightning, I thought I saw movement on Craven's porch. Squinting through the rain-lashed glass, I could make out a hunched figure arranging pumpkins. Suddenly, Craven looked up, meeting my gaze. Even through the darkness and rain, I could see his smile. Slowly, deliberately, he raised a finger to his lips. I stumbled back, heart pounding. When I gathered the courage to look again, both Craven and the pumpkins were gone. Sleep eluded me that night. Every creak of the house, every gust of wind sounded like whispered pleas for help. By morning, I was a wreck. I don't know what possessed me to do it. Maybe it was lack of sleep or the growing certainty that something horrific was happening next door. But as dusk fell the next day, I found myself creeping towards Craven's house. The porch was empty, the jack-o'-lanterns conspicuously absent. Gathering my courage, I peered through a grimy window. The interior was dark except for a faint glow from the basement door. I tried the handle. It turned. Heart in my throat, I stepped inside. The floorboards creaked under my feet as I made my way to the basement door. The glow was stronger now, flickering like candlelight. And there was that smell again. Sickly sweet decay mixed with something metallic. My hand shook as I reached for the doorknob. This was madness. I should leave and call the police, but I had to know. I opened the door. The sight that greeted me will haunt me for the rest of my days. Rows upon rows of pumpkins lined the basement walls, their carved faces illuminated by candles. But these were no ordinary jack-o'-lanterns. The faces were too real, too familiar, and they were screaming. In the center of the room stood Craven, bent over a pumpkin, carving knife in hand. He turned, fixing me with those watery eyes, now glowing with an otherworldly light. Ah, Carl, I'm so glad you could join us. I've been waiting for you. The knife glinted in the candlelight as he stepped towards me, and I realized with horrifying certainty that I was about to become part of Craven's Halloween display. Craven's knife flashed in the candlelight as he lunged at me. I stumbled backward, crashing into a table laden with carving tools. They clattered to the floor, scattering at my feet. Now, now, Carl. There's no need to fuss. You'll make a beautiful addition to my collection. I scrambled for a weapon, my hand closing around a rusted cleaver. Craven's laugh echoed off the damp walls as he advanced. You don't understand the artistry. The perfect blend of flesh and rind. The way the candlelight flickers in eyes that will never close again. He swung the knife, and I felt white-hot pain across my cheek. Ah! Warm blood trickled down my face, mixing with cold sweat. In desperation, I swung the cleaver. It bit deep into Craven's arm, and he howled, a sound more beast than human. But instead of blood, a thick orange pulp oozed from the wound. Craven's flesh rippled, his skin taking on a waxy sheen. You see? I am my own masterpiece. He grabbed my throat with his uninjured arm, fingers digging in with inhuman strength. Black spots danced at the edges of my vision as he lifted me off the ground. Let me go. A cruel smile twisted Craven's features. Oh, I will, but first you must be prepared. He slammed me onto a wooden table, straps suddenly coiled around my wrists and ankles, tightening of their own accord. I thrashed wildly, but to no avail. Craven loomed over me, his face now a horrific blend of man and pumpkin. The process is excruciating, but the results, now nah, the results are eternal. 
The knife descended. I screamed as it bit into my flesh, carving a gruesome <gasps> smile from ear to ear. Blood filled my mouth, hot and coppery. Now for the eyes. Windows to the soul, they say. But yours will be windows to another realm. I squeezed my eyes shut, but Craven pried them open with cruel, calloused fingers. The tip of the knife hovered just above my right eye. Please don't do this. Craven paused, tilting his head as if considering. Then he plunged the knife down. Agony exploded through my skull. I howled, thrashing against my restraints as Craven meticulously carved around my eye socket. There was a sickening pop, and my world went dark on one side. Through the haze of pain, I heard a wet plop as something landed in a bucket by Craven's feet. One down, one to go. As he started on my left eye, I let out a final, guttural scream. But there was no escape, no rescue coming. Craven worked with surgical precision, humming tunelessly as he carved. The pain was indescribable, but slowly it began to fade. A strange numbness spread through my body, my skin tightening and taking on an unnatural waxy sheen. Almost done, just a few finishing touches. I felt him carving into my chest, scooping out my insides, but instead of killing me, each cut only seemed to cement my new, monstrous form. Finally, Craven stepped back, admiring his handiwork. Perfect, my finest creation yet. He lifted me effortlessly, carrying me up the stairs and out onto the porch. As he placed a candle inside me, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in a window. I was no longer Carl Yoncetta. I was just another jack-o'-lantern, forever frozen in a silent scream. The candle flickered to life inside me, and with it came an awful awareness. I could see, I could think, but I couldn't move. I was trapped, my consciousness bound to this gourd prison. Craven patted my head, chuckling softly. Happy Halloween, Carl. I do hope you enjoy the view. As he turned to go back inside, I realized with horror that this was just the beginning of an eternity of silent suffering. Show your most horrific support by slashing the like button, subscribing, and smashing the bell. Stay tuned for more stories.